Hi, good morning. Hope everyone is doing good today. Um, yeah, so we're going to continue off of what we did last week. I finally got some fabric paint. I already did some online. Um, let's see if she'll focus. Oh, there we go. It's not going. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so I got some online. So hopefully, and I swatched them last night to see which ones have the best, like, opacity. Like, some are more opaque than others, so that's why I got two different brands to see how they'd work. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this shirt that I'd started. I think it was Thursday or, it had to be Wednesday or Thursday that I started this one. So just to go over, we did the pocket last week. And then the plan was to do the collar and then the trim different colors. So the red, yellow, blue to match the primary color theme. Yeah, I also did my nails yesterday. So on this hand, I did like a violet and then an indigo accent and then opposite on this hand. So indigo and then a violet accent. Oof, <laughs> all the white balance, sheesh. Okay. But yeah, so hope everyone's doing good so we can go ahead and jump into it. Bye, face cam. Leaked. Okay. Don't understand. I'm gonna try and keep the cords as much out of the shot as I can. There we go. Okay. Mm. Okay, yeah, that's better true to color. Yeah, so based on, because I did these swatches last night, and I compared one layer of paint versus two layers of paint. So these ones, because I used two brands, this is the Tamoil, and then these ones are the Arteza. So these ones are both marketed as um, high opaqueness. So these ones, right here, this is one layer two layers, one, two, one, two. And then here for Arteza, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I noticed that this Arteza one is a bit more glossy than the Tamoil. These ones are just like the first brands I saw off of Amazon. So like I'm no pro in choosing paint. And just based on how they finished drawing, I personally prefer the blue, I like how the tumoils are a bit more matte, but yeah, so either way, both paints are going to take probably two layers for full coverage, for full opacity. So I think I kind of want to go with the blue and yellow for tumoil, and then the red of Arteza for the specific shirt. Let's see if I can zoom in so I can get, I can see a little bit better. Yeah, so if we see this blue and the yellow are really bright for this for this one but in comparison this red is a lot brighter than this red which is interesting because a lot of the bottles are labeled with how opaque they are even though they're fully opaque it also is probably because this fabric is black if this were on white it probably show up a lot better um but yeah i just have to take in consideration that as well, because I only swatched these on black fabric, because I didn't have any lighter fabrics around. Okay. So I said I one in red from Arteza, and then blue and yellow from Tumoil. Oh my god, it was so bad too, because whenever, when I opened the bottles last night, if you open them, right, the, it had a plastic seal on the top, which is pretty standard, right? So, 
And my nails are hella long, so it's hard to grip things. Like, I was, like, taking the plastic edge off like this. But then there wasn't- it wasn't, like, long enough for you to, like, grab onto. So, dummy me, I, like, went to try and tear it off with my teeth. <laughs> like, low-key ADD. And I didn't realize that it's paint. <laughs> So I, I was able to pop the plastic like top off, but then I got hella paint in my mouth <laughs> So kiddos don't do that. Don't be a dumbass um, So yeah, just story time Like I rinsed out my mouth. I put alcohol in it and then like I brushed my teeth. So it's weird because like it still feels kind of like like Sticky almost it's, it's bad. It's bad. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, kiddos, don't don't eat paint. Don't huff paint either. Bad for you. It's really washed out. I'm gonna go ahead and fix the lighting a little bit. I forgot what this angle I have to dim my lights. Okay, BRB, I gotta turn my main light on. Loki hate how you can see like all these shadows, but it's right. Let's see if I can change. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Okay, let's get started. There we go. Like I said before, it's weird that like the music will stop playing sometimes. Look, you're frustrating.
And I kind of want to see how these paints will do on like a lighter fabric. Like a white or a light gray. Because, um, we went to Goodwill yesterday. Because I was looking for like, because I want to learn how to sew. I kind of want to make like the patchwork style type clothing for myself because it's so hard to shop for clothes for me. Because like I'm short and pudgy. So like it's very hard to find clothes that like look good and fit, you know? Like I'd like to learn how to tailor clothing and then how to sew pockets or buttons. At some point I want to commit more time to doing that. So like I just went to Goodwill, got a couple shirts that kind of drippy. I actually got these really cool shorts that I'm wearing today. Um, I'll, I'll show you later when I have the face cam back on. But low key, probably like the best drip I own. They're these really nice, like stretchy striped shorts. And I found them first. And my mom was trying to like cockroach them for me, so I was like, no. I found him. And she's like, where'd you get him? I was like, the XL woman section. <laughs> Turns out that the short's like a double XL. <laughs> so earlier, um, my dad walked past me. He's like, move double XL. It's like, ah, good one, good one. <laughs> Jokingly, mind you, wasn't mean spirited, but it was funny. Yeah, and I also got a couple fabrics that add some like cooler prints. So that way, once I do learn how to sew, I have a couple prints that I can do like patchwork of. I also got a couple ones that I think had some really cool cuts. So if this fabric paint does work out, then I can start painting those as well. And you can already tell the difference between the acrylic and then the fabric paint. Because see how this one is so less opaque because the, um, the acrylic or the fabric absorbs a lot more than the acrylic.
Another big difference between the fabric and the acrylic is the acrylic is like hard once it dries, but fabric paint, it dyes the fabric. It has actual. It has pigment, but also has um, dye in it. <laughs> Sorry, that sounded so stupid how I explained it. So, like, it's not going to be hard when you touch it. It's either going to be like. I noticed that the feel of this Arteza is a bit like sticky, kind of like the puffy paint was on fabric. And then the Tumoil definitely felt a lot softer. Like, it almost felt like you're touching the fabric versus something on top of the fabric. I just don't know how long it takes for this paint to specifically to dry. Because a mistake I made when I was doing this part, it was I didn't let the paint fully dry in between. So that's why it was really sticky and it just wouldn't dry fast enough because when you do layers, kind of like when you do like nail polish and you don't wait for it to fully dry, it affects the texture and the ability for it to dry. So it's best to be patient and wait for layers to dry completely before doing another one. Which, this one seems to be dry- to be drying fairly quickly. It also could be because I'm trying to spread it as thin as I can. That way it will allow it to dry a bit faster. I'm debating whether or not to put a mask on. Cause like, some scents really bother me. And like, the smog has been messing up my respiratories. I can tell like my voice is a little bit hoarse today. Maybe I'm sick, I don't know, but like, I literally don't go out, so... PSA time! If you feel sick at all, and you frequently go to work or go out, I'd recommend getting COVID tested. 
because you do not want to spread that to your friends or co-workers or family. So if you're feeling any symptoms, get tested. Isolate. It's not too hard. In most workplaces, unless you're fully vaccinated, will require you to isolate if you're feeling symptomatic. So please, stay home. Just about every single state has experienced higher case counts. So get vaxxed <laughs> and stay home if you can. Yeah, because when I was working, there was a few, like, single cases in the workplace. And it's interesting because there's different regulations on isolation in the workplace. Loki kind of messed up because direct contact means no mask for more than 15 minutes within 6 feet. So, like, i.e., like, let's say you're working in a storage facility and you're right next to your coworker. If you guys are both not wearing masks then you both have to isolate but if you both are wearing masks or one is and one isn't then you don't technically have to isolate which i think is like low-key kind of sus or messed up because surface surface transmission is still a thing that's why it's best if you do go out mask up if you can or just mask up like it's not it's not that hard like and avoid touching your your face at all like your eyes nose mouth or ears because that's how it directly gets in your system. It, it's just like a straight highway to your immune system. Yeah. So like if you do go out, if you're vaccinated, that's great. It's really good. Doing the right thing, you know. Um, but even if you're vaccinated, still wear a mask if you can. That's the current CDC guidance, and I lucky find it frustrating how it's not being enforced. Like I went, I literally don't go out anymore, and because we went to Goodwill and then we went grocery shopping yesterday, and like I I live in Washington, it's a pretty left state, which kind of sad how this whole pandemic became political. Honestly, really sad when it's it's a humanitarian issue. Ultimately, so um, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like I'd have to say like seventy percent of people weren't wearing masks because in my head now I go out and now I think that everyone who has masks is not vaccinated. But. We went to uh, the Seattle Pike Place Market a couple weeks ago, I think a month ago now, and it was insane. Like, it, we went on a Thursday, so on a slow day, and it was still, like, hella busy. And, like, my mom, she was fully vaccinated back in April because she works for the school, so she had priority, right? And she's like, oh yeah, I don't need to wear it. I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, she's moderate risk, so she should be wearing one at all times, in my opinion. Like, she shouldn't be going out at all. If she can avoid it, right? Um, but, like, I, I wear it the whole time. Like, I don't care. Like, I was fully vaccinated back in May. So, I'm fully protected. Um, but Pike Place Market, insane how... Like, there's just so many people. And this was a month ago, so when, like, Delta was kind of there, but kind of not. Kind of not popping off. And still, like... To me... Because, like, if you've gone cr shopping during, like, Christmas time, like, every store you go to is, like, packed. Like, I can't picture that now. Like, that just makes me so anxious. Mainly because too many people and also, like, just disease running rampant. Because, like, my mom, during the start of the stay-at-home order, she made, like, hella fabric masks. And I'd wear them to work because, you know, they're cute. 
like Q patterns, that type of thing. But now, like, I found some cheap you single use surgical masks on Wish, and I bought them once there was adequate um, PPE for like essential workers, so like healthcare workers, people who are on the front lines, that type of thing. So, like, I waited to buy those till the shortages were less of a concern. And because in my head, I'd rather spend a little bit more money to be a bit more protected, you know? And it's honestly such, like, a personal battle for me because I'm fairly introverted. It's so, like, I don't need to go out. Like, I'm fairly content just, like, texting my friends and stuff. But then it gets to the point where, like, like, for my mental health, it's, it's good to see people outside the house. Especially now. I don't work so I'm just stuck at home all day I mean I could go out but then it's like what, what's the point of exposing myself for something I don't really want to do like I was hesitant going to the store yesterday um cause I was like do I really want to potentially expose myself for something like not fun like shopping like I'd rather go out expose myself for something I want to do you know Yeah, because when I got my surgicals, I got like two... No, I got like four hundred packs, so enough to last me a while. And like, if I don't leave the house, like literally I got like five years worth. So, pretty set. And it's nice because from what I've noticed, it's so, it's so funny when people complain about it. Because they're like, I can't see my glasses are fogging. Well, then it's like, you just have to tuck it under your frames. Um, I'd also consider getting larger frames. That way it has a bit more surface area to be under. And also, all you guys fogging up your mask, probably because your mouth breeders, like, literally. I was doing, like, comparisons on how it's like if I breathe through my mouth primarily or if I breathe through my nose. And I noticed that for me, I had a lot less fogging if I breathe through my nose. So, all you plebs who are mouth breeders, like, get with it. I think my only concern with doing this hand-painted shirts is the time it'll take. Also because I'm a slow worker. That's why I totally see the benefit to like screen printing. Like I was watching a couple videos on screen printing. If you don't know, it's where you press, it's like you put your shirt down, you either have like a stencil or like a, a rubber block print, and then you put it inside this contraption that presses it onto it. Yeah, we get a nice clean image. And I assume that process, depending on how complex or how many layers of paint you want to add, would take maybe 10 to 30 minutes per item. Versus this, where I'm basically 30 minutes in, and I've only covered, like, maybe six square inches. But I think... Um, I really like the aspect of it being like, oh, I hand-printed or handmade this pattern, you know? I think that appeal is really cool to me. For mass production, this is totally not feasible. No way.
I kind of like how... Because I have autofocus on my camera right now. I think it's low-key kind of aesthetic how the focus consistently changes. Have you ever tried, like, focusing with your eyes? Like... <laughs> trying to go from, like, near to far with your eyes? Like, I was sitting outside a couple days ago. And I was looking at, like, our lavender bushes. And I was trying to focus on, like... One that was like two inches away from me, and then another one that was like six inches away. Really trippy. It's cool though. I had a headache like instantly after, so no regrets. I kind of like how this is a bit more chill vibe. Like, I didn't bike Saturday or Sunday morning. Mainly because Saturday, on the Friday night, I only had like four hours of sleep because, like, oh, it was bad. I had a nosebleed, like, earlier in the day on Friday. And then, like, it's on my right side, and I usually sleep on my right side. So, I woke up at, like, one, and I could feel it, like, bleeding it, and I was like, uh-oh. So, I went up and, like, stopped it before I started bleeding. But then, like, I was just anxious thinking about it. Because, like, if you ever wake up with a nosebleed, it sucks. Because then it gets on your sheets and you're like, Ugh. and it's not fun. It's, like, the first thing you wake up to. So, like, I was so anxious, I couldn't go back to sleep till, like, 5. And then I was like, I can't do this. So I slept in that day. And then Sunday, I had homework to do. So I just woke up early and then started on that. Oh yeah, that was yesterday, Sunday, sheesh. Yeah, it's funny, because, like, this is week two of biking. Um, and last weekend, my mom was like, you biking on the weekends? It's like, yeah. Because <laughs> I don't lose that weight, gotta get that summer bod, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm never gonna be freaking skinny, though, like, literally. Like, I know, I, I like how I look right now. Like, I like thicker builds, personally. Like, I just need to lose, like, 10 pounds, and I'll be good. Then my clothes will fit. Yeah, it's also interesting because this paint is like a little bit thicker than normal acrylic. Acrylic. Like it's almost clumpier. Not clumpy, but like it feels stickier almost. Like less easy to spread. No. What? I 
I'm trying to tuck this tag under. Should have done that earlier, but didn't think ahead. Forgot to turn my sound off, sorry. I literally always forget. This is also taking a lot of paint. So it's probably not cost effective either. Right now, going on to the second layer of paint. Because you can definitely see the difference in opaqueness here versus the one layer. I just have to be very careful, because I know I get careless whenever I do like second layers and stuff. So I know I work with a bit more precision on first layers. It looks so nice on camera. Like, almost fully opaque. I love it. I'm debating whether or not to go over the initial pocket with these colors, that way the hues match. I think I'm debating right now.
just realized I didn't put a question mark on the QOTD. Rip. There we go. Now it's a real question. Almost there.
Okay. So we got two layers down. I kind of want to do go over the pocket with the red. That way the shades match. Because I know that will bother me. I mean, the shirt is not necessarily for me. I mean, it's very subtle. Like, you can't really see a huge difference. But I just want it to match the hue of the collar. Just for consistency's sake. I kind of want to test out how well the fabric print screen prints. Because I want to definitely start carving stamps again. So I was watching videos on like where they carve like really big, like using the whole like 8 by 14 block of rubber for one image. And it's like, geez, that's, that's a lot. To me, not a waste of material, but like that's a lot. Those blocks are like ten, fifteen dollars each. I also need to start practicing with brushes more because I'm so hard. So I'm so used to using hard tip pens. Because. Mainly because I like the control you get with pens. Because with brushes, you do have an aspect of control, but it's harder to manipulate because the way that like the the hairs plume out when you press down. A lot of variance in control. Yeah, it's very subtle. Like you can't really see. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. But see how these are a bit more saturated than the pre-existing reds I had used before. Yeah, that that that'll definitely little thing, little touch up, but will affect the final. I think I what I will do as well is touch up the white. That way you can clean up a little bit more of the black outlines too. Yeah, because this initial shirt was just a test. Like, I'm probably either gonna... Still annoyed that my sister said this, this one is okay. God, piss me off. But if she won't wear it, then I will, because I really like... The design. I also kind of like how it looks like childish almost. Like in terms of color and the way it's trim will be colored. Because I can't do the sleeve trims until it's fully dry.
Okay, so touched up all the red. I never understood the meme where people would drink from their paint cups. It's like, how are you putting it in your nice coffee cups? Like, I'm using a small mason jar because one, glass cleans a lot easier than ceramic. And also, like, I can see when my water's too dirty.
Right now, I'm just touching up the yellows now. I hate songs with the cracklies in it. It makes me think that, like, I have tinnitus or something. Don't like it. I get triggered.
Okay, got all the ammo down. I mean, the water does look like juice. <laughs> Can't be drinking it, though. Okay, I'm gonna grab some water real quick. Okay, we back.
Yeah, this bullet I'm covering with is a bit darker than the sky like baby blue I was using before. So it makes sense that I'm covering over with the new hues that I'm going to be using for trim.
Okay, so primary colors are touched up. I'm gonna go ahead and go over 
these sections with white to make it a bit more opaque. I'm going to go grab some paints. I'll be right back. Yeah, I am back. Yeah, as I said earlier, because I haven't opened them all yet, it has the plastic film over the cap. But do not use your teeth to open it, kids. Oh, that one came off perfectly. The other ones were good trouble, man. Oh, look at that. Hopefully this dries fully opaque. I'm also gonna have to touch with the black too. It's a bit more opaque.
It's weird how muted... Or how much more muted the colors look against that white.
Yeah, I don't like the little screechies. Skipping this one.
Yeah, all the white is filled in now. Okay, so now I'm just going to touch up some of the black, and then the pocket will be done! I think I gotta get a smaller brush. Specific ones. Pro tip, wash your brushes as you go.
Oh, hey, good morning, Yana. <laughs> morning, all caps, yeah, dude. It's 12.30. Hope you're doing well. Got some paints in the mail. So I'm retouching on the shirt I did last week. If you can tell, this white is so opaque now. Like, I love it. Because I got actual real fabric paint. So it's looking pretty fire right now. If that's what the kiddos say. And calling me friends seems kind of parasocial, man. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Real OG. Feeling kind of quiet today, so I don't know how talkative I'll be today. I don't even know what parasocial means, and that's okay, you do anything. Um, parasocial is kind of like, um, Ladwood had a very good video. If you know, if you're familiar with this community at all, he had a, a video that was like, you're not my friend, or I am not your friend. Basically, it's like, online there's a disconnect because you don't actually know the person. So, like, you know, like the crazy stalker stands? Who will believe that even though you haven't had any, had any direct interaction with an individual, they, they're so, like, not brainwashed, but they've convinced themselves that you are so close to an individual when you kind of aren't. And you believe that you're entitled to an interaction or affection. That type of thing. So, like, the people who get, like, 
upset over not getting like a tweet back or something. That's that's kind of like the only toxic dynamic about like online creators. Oh my god, I hate- I hate songs that have cracklies in it. I'm skipping this one. I'm skipping. Okay, we good. I got triggered. Okay, understood Virtue, yeah. It, that's kind of like- No, I don't think I'm gonna be famous. But that's kind of what I'm scared of. Like, people who like, will stalk you or find where you live. Like, that kind of toxic behavior. I'm not sure, like, what causes people to think that way. I think it's a mixture of, um, just social disconnect. And also kind of like, I think it also comes down to, like, a, a lack of empathy, too. Because I know, like, if someone were to do that to the person who's taking those kind of actions, they wouldn't like it either. Um... That's why I've never really had any online friends, per se. Like, because, like, one, I don't know them. You know, like, I'll, I'll message them, and that's cool. But, like, if there were, like, an emergency, they wouldn't be my first person I'd call, you know? I hate opening pink caps because like your thumb catches on like the lip of the thing and I always get paint on my fingers and I drag the paint and I get mad like I internally scream Okay, all black touch-ups are done. One of my goals today is draw a circle amount. Yep. <laughs> Can you, like, I have some nice stencils that I stole from my mom. Like, I have circles ranging from, like, like, four millimeters to, like, six inches. So, like, they're really nice stencils. I can't find them anywhere because she got them, like, 20 years ago, probably. Um, but when you're drawing circles, it's best if you, like, rotate your whole elbow versus trying to turn your wrist. Because you get a lot more fluid movement when you're moving, like, your joints. Also, when you turn your wrist too much, you get carpal tunnel, and that's not cool. Okay. 
Ready to draw today, though? Like people again or something else? Yeah, the bread is just about dry. Oh, I can't, I can't let that smudge. Yeah, red is still drying. The opaque came out really good. This is two layers of the Arteza. So, probably tomorrow, once this is fully dry, I'll do the sleeves. Yeah, trying to turn my wrist all. Yeah, I gotta do get some structure in my day. Yeah. Same. Like, I, I've said it before, but definitely streaming is giving me that structure. Because I haven't missed a day yet. I might miss tomorrow, though. Because it just, I have a doctor's appointment. I don't have one, but my sister does. And she might need someone to go with her. So I might bail tomorrow, but I'm not sure yet. But this is definitely giving me, like, a scheduled time to do something. Kind of like a job is what I found gave me the most structure in my day-to-day. -day. That's the only thing I miss about not working. Everything else is bomb. And not having money, that sucks. <laughs> but... If you give yourself a schedule that works for you, I think that'll benefit you in the long run. And when you do choose to go back to work, you'll be more accustomed to like waking up, doing things at a certain time. That way you get adjusted to it again. Just my take. <laughs> oh, the pocket looks so pretty now. I might just steal this back from my sister, I don't know. I at least gotta take some pictures in this, cause... It looks good. And the white is drying pretty opaque. Granted, it was over four layers of paint before that, but... A lot more opaque than the freaking acrylic. I kind of want to find some white fabric because I got some stuff yesterday that I can swatch to see how it'll show up. Once it gets cool enough to get back on my bike, it's over for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I saw a couple of the videos you posted. They're so cool, dude. Because I remember you were talking about uh, whatever it's called, like the flat surface, BM flat BMX. I was like, oh, it seems kind of epic. And then I saw like your clips on IG. And I was like, oh, that's cool, dude. Oh, <laughs> the only thing was like you weren't wearing a helmet, so I was gonna be like, "Hey, wear a helmet, please. Don't be safe. Be safe, you know." But I, I can ride my bike with no handlebars for like five seconds, and I can consistently ride it with one hand. You know, I used to be able to do bunny hops on my scooter, but like that's as far as I can go considering tricks. Whenever I do bike, go biking now though. Um. I always bring a first aid kit, like a mini one, because I have like a mini bag that I'll carry with like snacks, water, and that first aid kit just in case I get stranded or something. Then I have my bus card too in the bag. Um, but because I've crashed my bike, not crashed, but like just hit a corner wrong and like scraped up my legs. Like I've done that three times. And it's funny because this happened in like the same, on the same sidewalk within the same 100 foot stretch. <laughs> So I always get draw. I always get scared because I'm basically traumatized whenever I go over that sidewalk. Um, but yeah, carry first aid kit. Wear a helmet, please. Um, thank you. Yeah, it, it's cool, man. Like it's actually like really cool. <laughs> like anything athletic, I really admire because like I cannot do shit. Uh, thank you. When I have outside exercise, I move like a go getter. Yeah, I think that's what's really messing me up right now. Yeah, go outside, touch some grass. <laughs> um. Like, my mom, she has a garden, so she'll, like, do gardening stuff. And I will be... I'll, I'll be... Grud like, if she asks for help, I'll be like, okay. But, like, once I do it, like, touching the dirt is really fun. I usually don't like getting dirty, but, like, just feeling, like, the plants and stuff is really healing, you know? And to be fair, writing with the handlebars is hard. I can only do it for, like, five seconds, too. Yeah, I... There was one time... Oh, my God. One of the times where I crashed my bike on the 100-foot stretch, like... I saw my friend at the bus stop, and the bus stop was like 500 feet away. So it's like maybe if I yell loud enough, they'll hear me and glance at me right when I'm like riding with the handlebars. And I tried it, 
And I was like, hey! And then they didn't hear me. And then I hit like, oh my god, this was on like a really busy road, like a six lane road, <laughs> mind you. And I hit like the, because you know how the sidewalk dips for like uh, the handicapped people? You know, where it's got like, where it's like the edge is like rounded to hit the road. So it's not like a, like a three inch ledge you got a bunny hop. So I hit the sloped edge weird. And I skidded into the road. Like, <laughs> so like. It was so bad. I mean, like, I just get into the lane right by the sidewalk, but still was scary. Like, the car, like, stopped. I was like, oh. And, like, the guy rolled down his window. He's like, you okay? It's like, yeah. <laughs> and I was wearing skinny jeans. So I went to go, like, patch myself in a restroom. And, like, it was bad. Like, just my knee got scraped up. But I was sad because I was wearing light blue jeans, and they're stained now. I mean, it's, like, a very subtle stain, but I just get... I, I remember it. I'm like, oh, so stupid. It's kind of like the meme where, like, the, the guy tries to impress the girl. Where he's like, ooh, I could do Twix. And then he, like, falls on his ass. That scene will always be the reminder. Yep. Yep. Actually, I don't have those jeans anymore. Because I'm such a fat ass. Like, <laughs> if you got, like, thick thighs, you know that, like, your thighs will rub. And then you'll get, like, the tears right where, like, your thighs will rub all the time. Because, like... Three months ago, like, they finally tore through and I was so sad because those were, like, my favorite jeans. But yeah, sad. I, I think I still have them because I'm, like, I'm borderline a hoarder with some things. So I'm like, I can keep that and, like, save the pocket. And I can sew the pocket into something else. So I should just keep these instead of throwing them away. But then it's also wasteful to throw stuff away. But then it's like, if you have no use for it, then you might as well donate it or throw it away. But I can't donate those jeans because it's got a tear in it. So, I'm just conflicted. I think I'm gonna grab one of the shirts I got yesterday and try swatching some stuff to see how opaque like the white and the black will be. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Of I should have washed them all that I got. So BRB. Okay, back am I. Okay, I'll be looking for a bit. Gotta eat and do laundry. Yeah, you gotta eat breakfast, dude. <laughs> yeah, so I got a couple shirts yesterday when we went to Goodwill. And I knew a couple of them wouldn't fit. I was... I'm low-key, like, indifferent. Like, 
I understand that lockdown measures are very important. They work. Mask up. Stay home if you can. Good stuff. But then, like, I hate... I just hate going clothes shopping right now because I can't try anything on. And, like... I'm thick, so, like, finding stuff that fits is very difficult. It's so, like, I bought a couple things that, like, hopefully will fit. Like, I got some epic shorts that I'll show later. Really trippy. Um, but it's just frustrating for me. I mean, first world problems. Am I right? But still, it's, it's annoying. I mean, I get it. I... Because, like, I went to, uh, like, Fred Meyer a while ago, and I asked the employees, so what do you guys do for, like, sanitation? They're like, well, the, room, the dressing rooms are open for now. And they said, well, anything that people try on has to be, like, sprayed with alcohol or whatever, and then, like, dry overnight and then put on the shelves next day. I'll say, okay, that makes sense. But then it's like, if you take into consideration, like, anyone who goes shopping will touch, like, literally every single clothing on the rack, right? Because you look at stuff individually. So then it's like, how much does like fully sanitizing something prevent like more surface contact than me touching it briefly i mean i guess like the time of contact would matter but then it's like i don't know i don't know i'm gonna change the music genre because th this genre that i chose is kind of like has a lot of weird sounds that i do not like like i don't like any like scratchy sounds or like, I gotta choose a different genre, so I'm changing it. Because <clears throat> it makes it sound like there's, like, static, and then I get anxious. I'm like, is my mic messing up? Then... Okay. So, uh, anyway, I got a couple shirts that I want to try. So this one is black. I don't know if it'll pick up the pattern. But it's kind of embroidered. I'm going to turn my light on and see if that will help a little bit. <coughs> so it has, like, embroidered. see right here you can see like the implied groove so like from a distance the pattern looks like like waves almost because they kind of like it's like little plumes that flow like this across oh you can't even see my fingers it's <laughs> it's like plumes it's embroidered that flow like this so it would look really cool with either some bright saturated colors or like a dark medium and then a super light almost white blue to kind of emulate waves so that would look really pretty so that's what I was thinking for this shirt just doing it on a couple pieces because the embroidery is on the whole shirt it's either doing it on just the sleeves or doing it on like the front torso and then I also got a shirt I'll probably sketch it out so it'll be easier to see so So it looks like this, so a scoop neck and then has a cutout here for like a little bit of your shoulders and then forearm to show. And then it has these seams on the torso to make a little bit of an implied shape once you put it on. Or implied like hip dip, per se. And that goes, yeah it's just on the front face, so I think it'd be cool. Because it's like this kind of like olive navy green, let's say. Or army green. Like if I did a pattern here along that seam, I think that'd be a nice accent.
And then I have another shirt that's kind of like this, but it's just a regular tee. And then I got a brown one that's basically the same design as this one. So for now, I'm going to try and swatch just on like the inner fabric of this to see how well it picks up the pigment. Because it's sheer, like it's barely sheer. So I'd have to find a spot that's like not noticeable. Like here, probably. So I want to see what white looks like on this one. Because I was either going to do like white or like a very faint. Like off white but more of a green hue on this one. So if we just watch it real quick. So that's one layer. Then I'm gonna do a swatch with two. That way when it dries, I can see how opaque it is. That's two. So when it dries, I can tell. And to see if it shows through. It does not show through on the other side. That's good. That is very good. I'm gonna turn my light back off because it's a bit too saturated right now. A little better. Okay. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry, and then tomorrow I can see how well the shirt picked up the paint. Because so I know in an article that I read that these specific brands of paints will show better on cotton, and then like synthetic fabrics will not pick it up well. It'll have a little bit more resistance, like it'll still work, but it doesn't a, a absorb the dye as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch this black one. Because this one is kind of like that green one. Barely sheer, barely sheer. So I think this one will look really pretty with some blue and some white. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch my blues and my whites. And just hope that it does not show through. Yeah, whenever I swatch stuff, I'll just open my cap instead of dispensing it in a palette because I don't want to waste too much. I'm also going to test the two different brands on this one because this is a more synthetic fabric, so I want to see which one adheres better. It's not showing through on the other side, that's good. Yeah, some of these um, paints in the set that I got are more transparent than others, which I don't understand why they would not be all trend or fully opaque. Like, I don't understand it. Like, why not? Why, why are some translucent? Like, that's so dumb. I, it'd be different if there was like, if you had three of the exact same shades of red and one is fully opaque, one is half opaque, and one is sheer. Like to me that makes sense because then you still have a full range of opacity for each different shade. To me that makes sense, but or if you're buying a set that has like 30 colors, why not have them all be fully opaque? I understand if it's like a metallic color, because they're like metallic is not a natural pigment. Like, I understand that. But for everything else, like, why not? 
do not understand. Let me speak to the manager. It's picking up the blue pretty good. Definitely picking up the Tomo brand more for better. It's so cool how the, the mic picks up the sounds of like the pens and stuff. Oh, key satisfying. Two layers of paint does not show through. That is good. Yeah, this white is really opaque, surprisingly. I'm impressed. Yeah, so a color range like this, but like a light blue, and then a dark blue, and then a white, I think would definitely look really nice on this one. Because when I was um, shopping yesterday, I was looking for items that had like explicitly like obscure or like artsy cuts or seams. That way, like kind of that specific area or cut would already stands out on its own but kind of adding a pattern to it we kind of add to it and then because <laughs> like a plain shirt with like a normal cut would definitely look best with like a screen printed type designer pattern or just like a block print that covers the whole entire surface like pattern tees are really in right now like I kind of like the concept right now there's my paper we'll see um, like sweatshirts Don't mind me, I cannot draw clothing. I want to be a fashion designer, but lol, can't draw. It's like sweatshirts. They'll have like either a text or some type of pattern here on like the mid sleeve. I think something. Something like this along like this section would look really cool. So I kind of want to learn how to use, because um, we got a Cricut a while ago. I kind of want to learn how to use um, the software. That way I can just cut out the vinyls and then iron it on. That way I get a consistent shape and cut.
But yeah, so when I have time, I will learn how to use the software. Because, like, I have ideas of what I want to do. It's just a matter of trying to figure out how I can achieve those ideas when I don't have anything that can be used for mass production. I mean, a cricket, you can have, like, consistent images cut. So, yeah, you can mass produce with a cricket. But there's a limitation on, like, how fast you can make a cut. Or you also have to take consideration... Like how long it takes for it to iron and then set. So definitely painting is not gonna be feasible. Like it's cool and fun to do for like one piece. I know um I told my friend I make him one. If they sent me a shirt or I gotta find a shirt that fits some. Um because I really like how the primary uh, circle pattern pocket is coming out. Like I really like that one. Because, like, I want to I wanna wear, make stuff that I want to wear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, for this one, I think... The type of geometric, so kind of like tiles. I think something like that would look nice. And then... Or either like... Kind of like... Doily? So like... Kind of like a more... Intricate... Floral-esque pattern type print would look cool. But I don't want it to be too girly. Because I... Associate florals with like... Femininity most of the time. Because I really think the idea to implement like the more abstract patterns onto a single pocket, I think that will look good with like any pattern. I just have to think of stuff that'll look good on like either like a full panel or a section with a larger surface area. Because as, as I was looking through clothes at the Goodwill, which is either stuff that we bought new that they got from like the grandma and they don't like it so they donate it or like, old stuff from, like, 20 years ago. So you see, like, prints that are, like, really in ages ago. Or designs. Like, I like the concept. Like, I really like full print. Like, that's definitely my favorite thing to wear. But that's definitely gonna be, like, the hardest thing to paint by hand. And that's why, like, I want to learn how to do... Or get into stamp carving again, like create my own illustrations and then stamp or screen print. Maybe something with like rectangles. I like long bricks. But 
Because I also have to think about like direction. Because you know how like vertical stripes make you look taller and then horizontal make you look fatter. I know there is some like stuff that makes it not as like that's not the direct correlation anymore. I think what I could do is like draw some 2D templates and then draw over them in like Photoshop or something like overlay patterns. I think that'd be a good way to visualize. Cause I remember when I was little, there was like a like the Scholastic like kids book kids book you can get, and it was like this paper dresses, so it came with like stencils that had um, cutouts of like dresses and b tops, bottoms, and then cut them out. You trace the image onto paper, and then you cut it out. Like, I really like that. When I made mine, um, I traced the base dress onto cardstock, and then I would glue, like, um, paper gum wrappers onto it. Because a lot of the gum wrappers are foil, or, like, holographic. And I just thought they were really cool. I think I tried to sell them to, like, the people in school, but that was when I was, like, in junior high, so it's kind of cringe. Or, like, I think I gave one to my friends, too. I can't remember if I tried to sell them or not. I mean, I didn't really have any friends, so like, not like anyone would buy it. I'm just doodling right now. So I really like using shapes to make patterns. Like, I'll always gravitate. To basic shapes. I think it'd be cool to make block prints of like semi-realistic floor elements or like animals and like block print across like a full panel. Sorry, I didn't mean to clip. I'm so tired today. Ugh, what's up with me? <laughs> it's like, I think just about any illustration could be placed onto a shirt. Right? I really like, like tattoo artists. Because their designs are usually somewhat simplistic, but also has an element of like semi realism elements and then like abstract elements. Like, you know, where you see the designs where it's like a diamond and then it has an illustration, like partially inside or outside of it. <laughs> really trendy and aesthetic. Or like the moons. And then we'll have like some type of shapes around it and then a square. 
really trendy right now. But like... Both circles with a mountain in it. And then it's shaded with lines. And then it'll say like... I like mountains. By my prince. <laughs> Something like that. Feels like I've thought about making illustrations like that, but then it seems like I ain't no hipster, but I don't want to follow that type of trend too much. Cause like with more simplistic designs, you have to have a lot of a really good sense of um, like just design in general like implied shapes, implied lines, any forms that your design will make uh, we did a yog counter, that's gotta be like the 8th one today Okay, I'm back. Ooh, nice sketches. Yeah, thank you. These are kind of shit. I'm just like brainstorming ideas of like concepts and patterns I can implement on like fabric. So th these are like basic thumbnails, but thank you. <laughs> um, there's probably because like this is the way I see it from my point of view. So y'all see it upside down. So I, I guess you could turn like your phones upside down. Like, turn off auto-rotate. Because um, in order for me to get a better angle on my camera, like, it's gotta be, like, in my face, and I hate that. Um, but yeah. That's fine, I'm on a PC anyway. J just gotta sit upside down, hang from the ceiling. Um. <laughs> yeah, so... Also with design, you also have to take in consideration, like, the direction of, like, your elements. Because there is a limit. I guess you could do like realistic renderings onto the fabric. That's kind of cool. Uh, but there is a limit because one, in terms of supply, in the consistent shade, I'd have to have adequate paint. And then... I hate color mixing, like I hate it. That's why I usually don't paint anymore. But... I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah, adding these rounded edges definitely contrasts the more sharper edges. Cause like, to me, this looks like shattered glass. And then the rounded lines. Kinda makes it look floral, almost. That's why I always gravitate back towards more like doodly or abstract type work because you don't really know where it's going to end up. And it's also cool to see the process of how different lines and different shapes can create a more coherent image. Like see like this looks like almost like a rhododendron or maybe like a hibiscus with like the rounded edges and then the single leaf. I really like this design. I'll have to save this for later. Box that in.
I'll always see like the scale design everywhere. Like in every single Zendoodle book, I usually start with this one. Like the rounded scales. I think it's also interesting how more simple designs are in in fashion. Like you'll see a lot of like a lot of basics and then like a printed pant or like a printed shirt and then a basic. I also kinda like how like simple embroidery is really cute too like you'll see like a simple like dad cap and it'll have like a floor embroidered on because i know before i was born my mom was really into embroidery like she actually made on this really cute like black for me and it says like my birthday the time I was born i mean she added that after i was born mind you <laughs> But it had, like, an illustration of Pooh Bear, and then some flowers. Really cute. It's not I think something flew me like this. It's, it looks almost like an abstract fern or seaweed. Then maybe some like cross hatching. I think also, like if I'm working on just, Let's see if there's a way to flip my camera real quick. Oh my god, there is a way. There we go. <laughs> my camera's flipped. Okay, now now y'all can see. The orientation they're working on. Nice, yeah. She could told me, man. <laughs> I feel so stupid. Because, <laughs> like, 
whenever I download a new application, the first thing I will do is look at all my settings to see what I can manipulate. But yeah, now it's flipped so y'all can see the right orientation. I just gotta remember to flip it back for next time. Oof, she's not flipped. There we go. Okay. So I think another cool concept for like, if we're talking about just pockets, right? Yeah, about a surface area of about four by three. Let's see. Looks so like the acute series would be to do like pots or something. So like a series of cactuses or. That'd also be a really easy screen or block print to make. You know, just a simple line art and then filling in with color later. An issue, like, with more simpler styles like this is you'll see, like, a lot of copycats, per se. Because it's important whenever you're drawing to always draw from a photo reference when you're trying to get your base shapes down. You do not want to reference from another illustration because then you're basically copying whatever shapes and forms they use, which is not cool. That's bad. It's fine if you're a child and you're still learning, but if you're an adult, that's bad. So don't do that. Because um, you, you can look at an illustration, try to maybe emulate their style. It's kind of like the argument of fair use. Like, you have to add your own element to it, you know? Like, this shape right here is a very common shape used for cactus. Just a simple pillar and then a single arm. Because when you look at photos of, of like, um, standing cactuses, they're a lot more... There's a lot more branches, a lot more complex. A lot less, um... Less defined silhouette. Versus if you look at a silhouette like this, you're like, oh, it's commonly accepted. Like, oh, it's a cactus, you know? Um... Let me actually pull up a ref of a cactus. They're just talking about it. Shoot, I did not realize how long I was muted for. Big sad. I don't know why it muted. That's weird, that's sus. Okay. Maybe I press a button or something, I don't know. Um, anyway. So if you look at like a reference of a cactus, you'll see like the basic shapes, right? Like the one I'm looking at, it's kind of like rounded like a pumpkin, so it has... You can see... Like the rivets, right? And then it has kind of like a more organic, like floral top. And then along the grooves, it has edges, the prickly bits. So that's like a simple abstraction, right? So you can add or subtract detail if you're doing a more accurate rendering. So, like, if you wanted to do an abstract rendering, you'd probably just do a rounded shape. And then something like that. And then maybe some triangles to help represent the prickly bits. Let's 
so that shape and that form still emulates a cactus ray, but using more abstract elements, so like some rounded edges and then some more sharp edges. So something like this would probably look best with um, either liner art or just a simple block fill. And when you're doing designs, you have to have to take into consideration how big it will be. So if I'm doing something that'll be like a 6x7 illustration, you can add a bit more detail because you'll the details will be easier to notice, right? But if you're doing something that's going to be 1x2, like this quick thumbnail, there will be a limit to how much detail they can see from a distance, right? Get a photo of a watering game. Because I think a series of doing like gardening supplies would be really cute. I'm using Safari and the default search is Yahoo. Cringe. Like the traditional water cans with the circle spot with the holes in it. I hate watering with those. Well, that's sus. Why the webcam turn off? Being hacked? I don't know. Hmm, that's odd. I don't know. What was I gonna say? Yeah, so like the watering cans with like the circle spout and the holes, those suck. Not a lot of water comes out. It's like whenever we water the garden, we have like bins and then we have pitchers. Because like they're in like medium to large filled um, like mesh baskets instead of mesh bags instead of pots. Like each mesh bag needs like half a pitcher, so like. Basically half a gallon of water every other day. Like if you're watering for one of those water cans, you'd be screwed. There we go. That's the right orientation. So I think a series of doing like the mini potted plants would be cute. It's crazy you're talking about water right as I got back from filling my bottle. Yep. Psychic. <laughs> What's the... What's the... It's the meme where he's like... It's the guy on TikTok. And he's like... Energetically aligned. Like, there's no such thing as a coincidence or some shit like that. I don't go on TikTok, but I see the re-uploads all the time. And it's so fucking funny. Like, HH, you're a meme on that guy all the time. And it's great. Um... I need to drink 32 ounces right now, <laughs> or else I won't do it well. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, like, I don't go on TikTok, but, like, I see his stuff everywhere, and it's so funny. Because there's, like, an aspect with, like, people who do, like, like, witch talk, or, like, the 
the psychic stuff and you're like, do you think they actually believe it? Or like, are they just gassing it up for like the content, you know? Um, cause I, my mom had a crystal phase, like she didn't believe too heavily into like the healing properties. But she had like a hot stone kit, so she'd use that for like massages and stuff, but like... I used to collect rocks. Um, I was really into it, cause like, oh my god, I, I cannot get into collecting again, cause I'm like... I'm a completionist, so like, if I start it, I have to get them all. That's why like, I do not want to get into like, stuffed animals or figurines, cause like... the will ruin my bank account. Um... But yeah, I used to collect rocks, so like... Anytime for birthdays or Christmas, I use my money on that. And now, like, I don't know where the rocks are. Like, we probably donated them or set them at a garage sale or something. And some people just do it for the content, for sure. Yeah, for sure. But then it's like, how can you tell, though? Like, there's some whack people online that are, like, too into it. Cause there's like a healthy level of like being into that kind of stuff. You just have to also keep an eye on like reality, you know. Yeah. I don't know. That's what sucks. You never know. Yeah. You just like the person whose content you like most. Most even when there's that possibility. Yeah. That's why, like, um, I don't ever want to get too into any of those kind of things. It's not that I'm susceptible to, like, taking it too far, but I don't want it to get to that point. Because, to me, when people become too reliant on it, there's, like, other underlying issues, like, i.e., like, mental health or, like, their situation, like, escapism. Um. But you just can't become too reliant on things that aren't reality. You know. And like seeing like younger people online so much, like on YouTube or TikTok, it concerns me a little bit because when you're younger you're so much more I guess gullible or susceptible to believing things at surface level. This kind of looks like an artichoke. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Talked about it before, but like, I don't want my kid on the internet. And mind you, I'm probably not going to have a kid for like 10 years or never. So probably by then, everything is going to be so much more advanced. I guess, so... I just realized my mom's not home today. She's out and doing errands and she freaking hates fish. And she's always like, you know, you can make fish whenever I'm not home. And I'm like, okay. But then she like complains whenever she gets home. Like, I could spill it. But I'm like, I can make fish for lunch today. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, right now I'm looking at a wrap in an aloe plant. Kind of like how, like, the spikes make it a little bit more fuzzy. Like, not an explicit outline. I usually hate doodling. Like, I usually would just do, like, a final project. Like, I know a good exercise is to, like, just fill a page. Like in your sketchbook or something. I don't like doing it. Like filling a whole page is overwhelming sometimes.
I'm gonna need to trim my nails soon. I think I grew them out too long. Probably next week. Because, like, it's getting hard to, like, grip my pencil. Like, the nail gets in the way. But then I'm also like, I really like how long they are. <laughs> They're cute. Yeah. I think I'm done sketching for now. Uh -huh. I really like how this concept came out. I'll definitely save this one for later. I like how there's like sharp edges and then rounded edges. I need to think about like a good pattern for this. I think something like with trapezoid. No, that's not a trapezoid. More of like two trapezoids put together. Something kind of like an Aztec typey design. Like a mosaic, I think would look cool. Hey, that song has scratches in it, so I'm gonna skip that one. Who likes the scratchy noises for like ambiance? I do not. Who likes that? Like who? Tell me. Only plebs like it. Or like the ASMR freaks. <laughs> Just kidding. If you like ASMR, that's cool. You do you, but I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but like I can't do it. Sometimes I feel like I should have plants in my room, but I'm just not a plant person. And I'm not trying to water anything well. Yeah. I, w I, w I want to get plants, but then I'm like, I know they're gonna die. Like, this is why I don't have any pets either. <laughs> like, not saying I would neglect them, but... I also don't like dirty. Like, I don't like the thought of, like, dirt in here. Because, like, where are no shoes inside the house? Like, we're that family. Because it's weird for me to think about, like, wearing shoes in the house. Like, you walk around barefoot, too, in your house. So, like, you're still bringing, like, the outside germs inside your house. And then you're stepping it. Then you're going on your bed. There's, like, people who go in their bed with their shoes on. Like, I don't... I don't understand. <laughs> um, That's a whole nother tangent. So, like, just saying. If you wear shoes on your bed, something's wrong, man. I like fake plants. Like, I like the aesthetic of like, like the white room with like wooden furniture and then plants. I like that aesthetic a lot. But if I do choose to go with that aesthetic in my room, I'd probably get fake plants. I saw like an ad or like a parody ad of a product no, it was a YouTube video, not an ad. A Mark Rober video, I think, because he was highlighting, like, fan-made inventions. And it was something that you walk past, and then it'd, it'd be like, Hey, water me. Because it would, like, weigh or figure out the water content. I can't remember if it was her Mark Rober video or an actual ad. I can't remember. But it's like, plants aren't supposed to talk. <laughs> They're supposed to sit there and look pretty.
just about at four hours, so we're probably gonna end soon. Cause I kind of want to. So I want to do art ostrom too. So I've gotten too much in the habit of doing art just during my scheduled stream time. Because I have ideas of other things I can do. Um, like no leaks. But I've said before, once I have an adequate setup to do gaming, I want to have some type of art element integrated into it. So I'm planning on like projects of what to do for certain games. But I want to do that stuff off stream so it doesn't like leak, you know? Like I have an idea, because like I kind of want to play baby games because I'm not a real gamer. <laughs> um, like I think Cookie Mama is really fun. Like I remember I was at a sleepover at my friend's house and like she, she was like higher middle class, so, like they had money. I remember she had like a uh, Nintendo DS and I would play Cooking Mama on it because like I didn't have a DS. So I was like, oh, this is so cool. It's like, I'd like to play that again on the Switch. Because like, that's easy. I can play that. Like, that's easy. It's a baby game. Yeah, I think like oh, big side. Like having like implied lines and then filling in that way the implied lines will add a bit of movement. like also bearing like the length of the shape I think this would be a good concept for an illustration I might do like a more finalized version of this another time It's almost like, like stone tile, like, I think it would be so fun to paint tiles, like, I think that would be the coolest thing to do, like, if I could do that for a job, that'd be epic. It almost looks like the lines on a road. I think if I do do the stamp blocking, or whatever you call it, I think it'd be fun to do a series with like bugs or insects. The only thing I, di I didn't like about stamp carving was that um, I would trace, like trace over a photo. Which is fine. But like, I'll have to think about it more. Because the thing with stamp carving is like, once you mess up, it's kind of hard to cover up. Because you're carving into a, a rubber block. So like, if you make... Like, if you mess up on paper, you can erase it. Or you can cover it up. Like, with stamp blocks, like, if you actually carve out a chunk, it's harder to patch it up, because either you have to, like, just leave it be, or, uh, you can, like, glue it a missing piece with excess, like, scrap rubber pieces you have. So, like, the stakes are higher when you do, um, when you work with, like, the rubber blocks. 
So yeah, like, I'll think about it more. And like, I'm just thinking about stuff so I can do a couple weeks from now. Yeah, because I think for this week, I'm going to finish off shirts. And then do more abstract illustrations. And then, because like, I have a list of things I want to do. And if anyone has input on like what they want to see, then tell me. Because like, I definitely want to do things I've done in the past, so like either stencil making, paper cuts, um, I have a list on my phone, I don't want to pull it up right now. I think the idea to do like, like painting, press on nails, I think that'd be fun. Um, yeah. I also want to do singing streams, but I don't know if anyone would like it, so... If you want to see it, tell me. Oh yeah, I'm really gonna end. <clears throat> it's already two o'clock. Oh my god, it's two o'clock. So I'm hungry. I gotta eat lunch. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I, I think I'll on the side do an illustration series with cactuses or small pot of plants. I think that'd be a really cute um, stencil or block print to make. And then, yeah. So to go over what we did today. Oh. Anything you want to do would be cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let, let's flip the camera before we go back to face cam because that'll mess me up. Okay, let's put the... So I can remember which way I flipped it. There we go. So that'll be the true angle. Y'all ready for face cam? <laughs> um. No leaks, no leaks! Oh my god, that zoomed in. See my zitty face. I am rotating the knob the wrong way. Big brain. Yeah, when I when I sat at this table, there was cobwebs on my ring light and my camera. So like I don't mind spiders. Spiders are good. Spiders are good. But, yeah. Oh, here are my shorts that I thought were like pretty fire. Okay, cannot show my feet. Do not show my feet. I gotta be careful. Um I'm gonna go on my knees. Frick. I pulled my headset out. Um, but they're these really cool striped shorts. Like, my mom was jealous of them. <laughs> um, yeah. They're really cool. They're like mid-length, so they go to like a couple inches above my knee. And it's nice because the waistband, it was like 75% um, cloth and like the rest elastic. So like, it fits good, and it's not too tight. Yeah, I love them. You know you make the right choice when moms get jealous. Yeah, she was- oh my god, it was so funny, because we went to Goodwill, right? And I found these in the um, XL section of the women's pants section. And they're really cool, because I, I was looking for pattern shorts. Because um, I'm trying to wear- a, I like the concept of pattern bottoms. I really like it. So I was looking for a couple. And I kind of want to try only buy from secondhand stores from now on. Just because, you know, save the environment. Uh, there's some really cool stuff I found yesterday. Like, I found this really cool, like, zebra button up, which is, like, a bit extra for me. But, yeah. So I'm going to. Let's go ahead and look at the shirt from earlier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh my god, this looks so much better now. Like that full opaque white. Oh my god. Looks so good. The white the yellow is a little bit fluorescent on camera, but it's it's slightly more muted, but it's still a really bright yellow. Yeah, so today I did the collar. So once this is dry tomorrow, I'll be painting the 
the sleeves. I might do that on or off stream. I don't know yet. I might. Maybe. It's really boring content, though, so... <laughs> I don't know how many of people would want to see it. But... Yeah, so I think that'll be all for today. Um... Yeah. Thank you to anyone who tuned in. Um... I think... Because I know I'm going to, like, do my nails every Sunday, so I think... Really... No. I think it'd be cool if I did, like... Like, secret Sunday streams or something, and, like, do singing. Because, like, if I sing, I gotta delete the VOD. Like, because I don't want no DMs today. So, um, that way it's unscheduled. That way it's not deleted from the queue. But yeah, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Um, I don't think it's boring. People come to Archie just to chill and talk a little. Yeah, valid, valid. Um, great stream. I look forward to more of your Archie streams. Oh, thank you. Um... You've been motivating me a little, and I'm grateful. Yeah, no problem, man. I'm I'm honestly really glad to hear that. Because what I hope to do... Why ain't she focusing? There we go. Uh, what I really hope to do is... Ultimately, create a place where like, people feel comfortable like sharing their art or like wanting to make their own stuff. Like, I really like... Um, I'm not personally in like, discords or anything, but I really like seeing... Like, people make fan art or stuff, and it's really cool, because everyone is usually really supportive of it. And I think anything that encourages more creative outlets is really good, especially now. But I know for me, it's really, like, calming and relaxing to be able to make something. And, like, I take a lot of pride in most anything I do. So I really hope to create a place or a space where people are encouraged to make things. Because with automation... um. <laughs> more creative careers are going to be needed because like your normal office job can more likely be taken over by a robot right but then there's also ais that can make like pretty good realistic renderings so <laughs> we don't know but in general i think any type of creative outlet should be encouraged so yeah so i'll be back um tomorrow same time 10 a.m pst i'm either doing more shirts or I think I'll do more shirts. Like, I'll probably do the ones that I swatched today to see how the color worked out. Or if not, doing more illustrations. Like, hopefully, <laughs> gaming is coming soon. Uh, we'll see. I, I, I'm trying to convince my sister to go have Zizel on a nice laptop. Because I have all the equipment for it. But it's just my MacBook is... She's humming. She can only handle so much. So I'm trying to convince her to go have she's on a laptop. Like, I want to get, like... I know it's cringe, like, they always tell you, like, do not, not buy the best camera, do not buy the best computer. But then it's, like... I think... Um... With, like, any type of content, there's an aspect of, like, personality and then production value. Like, I don't want my stuff to look like shit. Like, yes... Um... Some people like when, like, the webcam looks like crap or something, but then it's, like... If then you're more dependent on like the personality, right? I think for me, especially with art, uh, I think you do have to have like adequate lighting or adequate like camera setup. You know, like people can actually see what you're doing. Like it's definitely more visually based than auditory. So I think there is. Yeah, you have to give or take with whatever you want to pursue. So, and that's just my opinion. But yeah, hopefully gaming's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I have ideas of what to do. It's just like, I can't do it because my computer can handle it. Um, yeah. Yeah, do it. Do it. Be part of the morning crew. Oh, also, just want to say where you're still, Ariana. Uh, I popped onto your, your uh, gaming stream on Saturday, I think. And it was at like 11. So I was like barely awake. And, like, I remember, like, I... Because, like, I'll hold my phone if I'm watching a video on my bed. But then at, like, 11.30, I set my phone down. I was, like, watching, like, laying down. And I fell asleep. I'm sorry. Not not that I was bored. I was just tired. Um, that's why I stopped chatting. So I was, like, I was, like nodding off. But, like, that owls. I don't get you. I don't, like, I literally... Can, I don't understand you guys. Um. Yeah, anyway, that's all I wanted to say.
Uh oh. He got automated. Oh shit. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh my god, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't like. I'll have to look at what you said because that's really fucking funny. I'm sorry, but. <laughs> Oh, really? That's what it said? Okay, I'll have to... Because I have auto mod on Steam Lab, so I will have to change that. Because, like... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll change it right now when I end. Because, <laughs> like, I personally don't mind, like, bad words. I think it's funny. Um, Like, some light... Some light profanity is good. Like, I don't mind... When, like, I think it's fine if people use it in, like, a light, funny way. But, like, if you're saying, like, fuck you, like, that's... That's bad. That's bad. Um, I'll have to change it. Oh my god, that's so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> mainly because like I don't, I don't know how to mod. I don't, I don't have any viewers. I don't have any mods. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at my computer. That's why I'm not looking at Cam. Um. <laughs> Sorry, it's so, it's so fucking funny to me. Uh, I'll change it because like I don't want to curse too much. Like, like when you watch a movie, there's like. A certain amount of f-words that make it like an r-rated movie you know i don't like that i don't want to be r-rated yet so yeah okay i'll fix that for you <laughs> it timed out for one second they're like that's not gonna do much though anyway okay oh uh, i gotta stop laughing okay anyway i'll be back tomorrow <laughs> yeah yeah we all have a great day thank you for popping in today anna uh, i'll see you around um, okay, yeah, have a great day too. Bye.